In December 2019, a new type of coronavirus first reported in Wuhan, and in March 2020, the World Health Organization (WHO) declared a COVID-19 pandemic. These coronaviruses enter our body through the respiratory tract and multiply by using the lungs or alveolar cells as hosts. Coronaviruses have a uniquely shaped protein called the spike protein on the surface, which is called a coronavirus because the shape of this protein looks like a crown. This spike protein recognizes and binds to the receptor protein called ACE2 on the surface of the host cell, and plays a key role in allowing the virus to invade into them. After viruses invade the host cell, they release a blueprint called single-stranded RNA, containing their genetic information into the cytoplasm. The single-stranded RNA self-replicates and uses the ribosome of the host cell to make proteins, which are parts of the virus. Through this process, numerous viruses are created and released back out of the cell through exocytosis, continuing to infect surrounding cells. Against these coronaviruses, Pfizer and Moderna have succeeded in producing vaccines using mRNA for the first time. The mRNA vaccine technology injects mRNA, which is the blueprint for the spike protein, unlike the existing method that uses the weakened virus or spike protein itself as an antigen. At this time, mRNA must be well packaged in a substance called LMP because its stability is very poor compared to other vaccine components. Vaccines injected into our body through intramuscular injection enter surrounding cells and deliver mRNA into the cytoplasm. mRNA is translated by the internal ribosome to create spike proteins which are recognized by the immune system of our body and induce antibody and T-cell immune responses. First, as an innate immune response, antigen-presenting cells such as dendrite cells process spike proteins and deliver them to limb nodes. At this time, dendrite cells break the spike protein and present the fragment together with the MAC1 or 2 proteins on the surface, and cytotoxic T cells and helper T cells responsible for adaptive immunity recognize this fragment and receive a signal and are activated. Deactivated helper T cells approach B cells and activate them to the antibody factory plasma cell. Plasma cells produce countless antibodies when an infection actually occurs. In addition, activated cytotoxic T cells recognize the infected cells when an actual virus infection occurs and secrete a signaling substance called cytokine to induce apoptosis. In this way, some of the B cells or T cells induced through the vaccine are maintained as memory cells for a long time, and when the coronavirus actually invades later, by inducing a much stronger immune response immediately, it is possible to prevent infection or eliminate the virus. <laughs>